This is your announcer, Chuck Landington. Welcoming you to the Metal Injection Livecast. For this month's bonus episode, the Livecast crew is digging through a treasure trove of Mike Franzess Eclipse for your enjoyment. In New York, this phenomenon is known as a lasagna copia. Back after this, the Metal Injection Livecast starts now. Hey, it's a lasagna copia! Welcome! Welcome, patrons! Thank you so much for all of your support uh, all these months, all of these years. Have we been doing the Patreon for longer than a year now? Almost, Almost. a year? October? September or October, something like that. Yeah. Well, thank you for being a patron for however long you've been. And it is our pleasure to bring you this very, very special episode of the Metal Injection Livecast. Our August uh, bonus episode at the top of the month is going to be dedicated to one of the greatest and greatest broadcasters in the history of any medium. Uh, You see him. According to himself. He's he's here with us today. He's here with me. He's here with Noah, of course. Mike Francesa. (laughs) Talking about Mike Francesa. And we're going to be. Sorry. Go ahead. I was trying to um, replicate his smile. He's the only person who I've ever seen smile and frown at the same time. Yeah. See <laughs> how his eyebrows go down? It's like. <laughs> his, uh, he's, looks at, he's looking at you like as if you are his disappointing son, but he's <laughs> at a family function and he has to keep smiling for some reason. Like there's a picture being taken. His son ate, g- scooped up some gabagool from the tray <laughs> with his hand. He's like, uh, uh, I just I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. Son told him that he's gonna be a professional wrestler. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna tag team with Kalisto. <laughs> you I you are not my son. Back after this. Well, it's crazy to think now. Mike entered our lives, I believe, with that Callisto bit as I fade into the <laughs> to the screen you, here. Rob, can you fade into Mike's face so that you have his hair? <laughs> no. That would be so funny. <laughs> Ghost of Rob of Future. Mm not working uh, we'll, we'll work on it <laughs> but uh i feel like that's when we we started uh talking about mike on the show it was four years ago uh around wrestlemania 32 when his son wanted to order it uh because he likes some guy named callisto <laughs> and, and uh since then we've been obsessed with with uh mikey and uh we've been obsessed with him because of how much he gets paid to not care about doing his job. (laughs) um, Which is something we very much strive for (laughs) as well, but we don't make nearly as many zeros uh, as Mr. Franchese. And also we we love our fans, unlike him who despises his fans with utter contempt. And it seems like he only, uh, like, his stories are always about him, no matter what celebrity he talks about. Uh, and uh, so, Eric, top live cast fan, Eric. Former uh, Fifth Mike, Eric. Yeah. Uh, he sent us a thread of some of his favorite Mike Francesa clips from the internet. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to be going over them, and we're going to be riffing on Mike Francesa. This whole episode is going to be us riffing uh, <laughs> on, on Mike. You guys, you, know, you, you do a whole uh, hour show, I'm gonna have whatever it is, and you can only riff on me. That's a joke. That's a joke. It's an utter <laughs> joke. You're fools. You're fools. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm now imagining... Uh, <laughs> Somebody calling his show and <laughs> playing this <laughs> for him. Can I just quickly ask Rob, is that his thumb <laughs> right next to your ear? He's giving you a wet willy. <laughs> yeah, just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like the guy that gave lots of wet willies in high school. Oh, you're going to lick his thumb? Oh, boy, this has gotten uncomfortable. There's All right. Like- well, also, uh, I do want to say when we're recording this, we're recording this in the last weekend of July, and uh, Mike Francesa announced right before we started, uh, the day before we started recording, that he is leaving WFAM. What does this mean? 
to us non-sportsmans. It means he's going to be back in December, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever, like, what potted plant they replace him with gets absolutely zero ratings, they're going to beg him to come back and yeah. do his slightly less abysmal ratings. With so for show. people who don't follow sports, you know, we've talked about WFAM, but it's basically the one of the – or the leading New York sports radio channel, or is that a national thing? It's – it has a lot of reach, though, I would say. It, it, and it also, they, they uh, very much promote the, um, the uh, streaming version of it, so that people like, do listen to it far away. I see. And, uh, it, and Mike... around. it reaches around a long way. And, and Mike uh, left the show a year or two ago uh, to launch his app. Like he, and I believe we... We did a healthy 20 or 30 minutes yeah. on that, just on yeah. how Mike had to figure out what the fucking app was. What it, <laughs> he still I doesn't know. He, he didn't even know how to use his own app, I remember, when, when he announced it. He was like, I don't know these kids. Uh, they go to the yeah. app store and uh, likes yeah. and shares and just give me a money. They, they tell me it'll be on the app. I don't know. I mean, is that Mons? Is that right? It'll be on the app? Okay. It'll be on the app tonight. Now, Michael Patrick Francesa was born on March 20th, 1954. He loved oh New York. York. <laughs> yes. oh, that's so funny. Why was Mike Francesa an important figure in radio? Mike Francesa was an important figure in radio because there, I got 20 words knocked out without dot, saying dot, dot. You might wonder, have we figured out why Mike Francesa is a big deal in radio? And the answer is no. I haven't. I really don't. I think he's famous because people in New York want to hear the sports scores. So they put on <laughs> the channel that plays the sports court scores every 20 minutes. And he's on at the most uh, common time that people do that. Well, he was the second son of Michael Anthony Francesa, who, was, who abandoned the family. Say it the right way. Francesa. Ant no, it's Anthony. Oh, Michael Ant Anthony. 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 I want to know how's his mother's lasagna. <laughs> Got me all excited uh, with that lasagna bland intro. So, so uh, his uh, Papa Francesa ditched the family when, when young Mikey was only eight years old. He has an older brother. He has an older brother named John and a younger brother Marty, who committed suicide on November oh, twenty seventh, no. nineteen ninety. That's sad. Oh, he I attended. What? His brown, his brown smile. <laughs> yeah. It's because one day his, uh, his brother, uh, Marty, uh, was trying to call Mike Francesa, and he was on hold for about an hour and a half, and then Mike picked up and called him a fool. So he's yeah, my brother. My brother didn't call the show. You're not a real brother. Uh, he, he attended Kellenberg Memorial High School in Uniondale mm -hmm. and then went to St. John's. Uh, where he graduated in 1977. He's currently a resident of Manhasset with his wife, Rose, who he commonly refers to as Rattle. You gotta, it's a pet name. You delete one consonant sound and then you're, you're straight. They have three children. They have a, a set of fraternal twins and, uh, that are 15 and a younger son named Harrison James, who's 13. What an old man name that is. How do you name I love this Harry. I love this his li this line in his wiki in November 2019, Francesa bought a home in South Florida, reportedly due to his desire to pay less in tax money. He just now got that desire before before this last year. He was okay with it. Yeah, you know, I used to like paying tax money. I mean, it was fun, you know. But I just something the spark is gone. You know, I don't know. I like uh, it's not, I don't love it as much as I used to. So you know, move down to Florida, okay? Catch coronavirus. <laughs> Try new things. Dead within three days if he caught Corona. Oh my God, he already has no lung function. Yeah, he can't finish a sentence without <sighs> without an exhale at the end. <laughs> it's like his punctuation. Well, let's jump into this with actually not a clip that Eric sent, but we're going to start with something uh, we talked about briefly before getting on the air, uh, and it actually ties into another bonus episode we had, one of our uh, earliest bonus bonus episodes, which is when. We went and reviewed Uncut Gems, mm. uh, the Safety Brothers movie with Adam Sandler, uh, a movie that we all enjoyed. And we talked about it in great length. Uh, we did a 45 minute episode. And of course we had to talk about Mike Francesa who had a cameo there. And we were wondering if 
uh, Mikey uh, talked about it, and we found this clip, which we only uh, played Uncut like Gems. four seconds of it, and we were already in love with it. So let's let's launch it. Let's kick off our our Mike critique with this quick clip from Uncut Gems, uh, or not, uh, from, from an interview about Uncut Gems with the very prestigious Fubo Sports. It's uh, Trish Stratus interviewing him, yeah. apparently. Uh, well, it's Julie Stewart Binks. Oh. Uncut Gems. Rela is she in any relation to Jar Jar? Binks. Sandler. In one word or less, what was the experience like? I was, it, okay, hold on. Sorry. She asked him, in one word or less, what is the experience of being on Uncut Gems like? How could you expect? <laughs> what's like less than one word? Like, eh, eh. And eh, also, eh. yeah, well, that eh. is a fair point. Maybe she's expecting some monosyllabic grunts <laughs> that don't qualify as words. But I feel like that's going the wrong direction. <laughs> if you're doing Mike Francesa and asking him to be brief, that's probably well, she, not the best. He just wants to get this miserable interview over with already. Yeah. So he if doesn't I, call it. If a, I limit him to one word per question, or he less. Gets, knock this out in two minutes and I'm back home. His one word is going to be like sweetheart every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's two words, technically. He can't not say that. He like, because he sees a young woman under uh, thirty that's attractive. He can't not say, "Sweetheart, honey." Hey, darling. How do you hey, tell darling. a woman she should smile more in one word? <laughs> hey, smart. Hey. smart. Hey. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> It was impressive. It was fun. Uh, it was different. Uh, you know, it's the first real movie I'd ever been in. Uh, I'd done some. It was impressive. It was fun. It was different. More words that actually have yeah. no relation to the others. But I'll just keep talking. Uh, I had done some other work. Uh, it was an extra in Braveheart. They had me on a horse for 12 hours a day. <laughs> a blue face pain. I was very allergic. It was not good. I talked to Dog about it. And he said, you know, uh, just be you know, bear with it, Mikey. Uh, you know. <laughs> Think of, just think of, the, think of the paycheck, you know? Uh, anyway. The three minutes and 45 seconds left in this video is just him answering that question. <laughs> Voice over word. stuff. For yeah. One word different one shows word. where I was me. Uh, Sopranos a couple of times used stuff that we did. Uh, there was a TV show called The Clubhouse that we did. The oh my God! Now he's going through yeah, every this IMDb. Ah! Yeah. Yeah, hold on, uh, uh, let me let me get out my phone here. I just want to scroll to my IMDb page. Uh, it's like he prepared questions that he wanted to be asked for this interview, and he's just going through that in his head, just answering uh, them. I was the I was the uh, a great uncle on the show animated program Doug. I don't know if anyone remembers this. Uh, what else we got here? <laughs> I like how the director has already posted on the back wall what he wants to happen. He's like, guys, let's just call it a night. This is this is already a disaster. End it. Call it a night. Come on, quick, quick. I have a feeling a lot of these shows uh, that's how they got the name because everyone just wants them to call it a night immediately. It's Christmas time. Yeah, they have a nice little setup there. Uh oh. What happened? They called it a night. <laughs> the audio guy went home. <laughs> oh, the audio's the audio's busted. Yeah, I don't yeah. hear the audio. Yeah. Oh, hold on, that might be on me. Look at that po pose we caught him in. <laughs> like he's conjuring something from the sorting hat. <laughs> <laughs> I it's would just like another cook. Expecto Patrolum. Give me a pastrami sandwich from uh, Leone's. Yeah. Uh... Rob, did a Broadway a uh, play where we were the. I just want to see full Francesa. There you go. Voices in a guy's head was our radio characters, but that was always me playing me. Right. Uh, so that was it was very easy. This was the first time they asked me. You see, I met with the Safdie brothers, who were very talented young guys, uh, and. This is all one word, by the way. Yes, they were big fans, and the I've Safety heard. Brothers. This, this is what happens when when you restrict him to a, a shorter answer. This is what you get. Please, what? Like, yeah, thirty words or less. Last time we said you gave us seven hours, so we're gonna do one word or less. <laughs> he produced. He produced the script of the Irishman. The last. Also, time I do want. Yeah, I want to point out he's answering also like four different questions. Yeah. he's answered when he's previously been in movies. <laughs> he's answered. What it's been like uh, for movies and TV shows to just use clips of his radio show. Yeah. He's answered the first time he met the Safties. 
And well, he's sort of answering what it's been like to be uh, acting. But not of all of those, he's answered that one the least. But, the, but, the but it was how, what was it like uh, in one word? What was it like to be on the set? I think it was so long ago. I'm not sure. <laughs> the same thing you know we grew up uh, in, uh, listen to your uh, dad's car blah 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 like everyone always tells me uh so uh they said we have an idea for this movie we're doing and we want we have a role for you and we just want you to be well in your tone but you'll play a character i said okay so i got there that day okay. uh, i said okay <laughs> okay all right i don't think there has to be in okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, i'll squeeze it in you know. i'll be there well, also the interview Sorry, go ahead. I bet the interviewer is going like, damn, why did I put in all that time to prepare for this interview? All I have to do is just say one thing and he goes it, off. Also, look at how awkward her, her body language is. Actually, both of their body language is so awkward right now in this stuff. She's turning away from him as much as she can. <laughs> she's ready to run away. She's holding her own hand. Look she at looks that. Like, she's like she's, clinching. She looks like she's about to do a one-cheek sneak fart at him. Like that. <laughs> 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 Shut him up. <laughs> I knew Adam Sandler because he every year he and Rob Schneider, Kevin James, they come through Radio Row at the Super Bowl. So I've, I've known him. He's done that year after year. He's come on the show. Whoa, leave. Kevin James, Adam Sandler do a do row? They do like a. <laughs> they run a train on his wife. Yes, <laughs> they run a train on his wife. Thank you. It's once a year, sometimes more, to promote different things. So I knew him to say hello to. Him. But uh, that day I showed up and then the scenes were both in an Italian restaurant. That's where it was. So they had taken over. It's the same restaurant where we had lunch when, we, when I met with the uh, Safdie brothers. Um, so I showed up that morning and, you know, Her if face. you know anything Her about face. movies, you stand around a lot. You know, there's a lot of waiting yes. time and there's setting scenes uh, and there's meal you know. breaks. And there's actress. <laughs> you're, sitting here, you're sitting here on the set of Call of the Night. I know you don't know too much about movies, but let me explain <laughs> to you. There's a lot of downtime. Right. And I just want to let everyone know for the people at home, you see this window back here with the skylight? That's not a real window. Green That's screen. a photo. <laughs> That's a photo in a frame to make it look like it's a window. We're not really uh, anywhere. We're like in a basement right now. You know? It's a replica of the window that my brother tried to jump out of. <laughs> he, <laughs> he had to hang around with me all the time for 12 Ouch. years. Uh, oh, no. That's terrible. <laughs> That made me a little teary eyed when I came in here. Uh, uh, I didn't throw him out the window, guys. Come on, don't hate on me. <laughs> when he was talking about the Italian restaurant, it made me think of. Uh, can you? Can we take a sidebar into another clip? Yes, you can take all the sidebars. Yes. He did a. He did a. Um, he did a, a commercial with Bill Parcells for a restaurant. <laughs> and uh, just like a three dollar commercial, which is fantastic. All right, let me look this up. Who's Bill Parcells? Uh, He's the former coach of the Giants and the Jets, and they're, they're like good. It's like a meme with him. Like he always talks about what good friends they are. Oh my God! Yeah. The Just first the thumbnail. shot. The thumbnail is a piece of food on Mike Francesa's tongue. If you could show that, even <laughs> get ready, it's coming. Here it is. Daddy, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. Mm. Oh my God! Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> I used to eat here at Manny's after every home game when I coached the Giants, and Manny's is as good as it gets. You're right; it doesn't get any better than Manny's chicken franchise. You tried the veal parmesan? No way! I never How have the veal. You say I the always have the chicken. Than the veal? I always have the chicken. I always have the chicken. I always have the chicken. How can you say that? I'm out of here, Manny. Where's the chicken? The veal's way better than oh Manny. My God. Everybody knows that. I Jack. love the logo. Yeah, I love that they they had to do that. That fake arguing and Mike couldn't even be convincing in that. Like he just says, "I always have the chicken. I always have the chicken. I always have the chicken." Over and over. <laughs> he like, couldn't craft like an argument, a point of contention to go after Bill Parcells with. He just had us repeat a phrase over and over. <laughs> so funny. I, I guess he's actually tried the veal since. <laughs> I'd like a follow up on that. Is Manny still James. even there? I love the chicken franchise. Who who thought of that shot with both of those guys, like with their mouth right up to the camera? <laughs> Do you think the uh, Safdie brothers were tempted to like put that in the script since he's already at an Italian restaurant to just have him and Adam Sandler argue over the chicken and veal franchise and see if Francesca remembered? 
I think if they had seen that commercial, definitely. Maybe they eluded them, so yeah. they, didn't, they didn't think of it. But I, he is, like, <laughs> stuffing his face in that movie. So. Yeah. I want to see that commercial redone, but with Hulk Hogan instead, and Hulk Hogan saying he had the veal parmesan. <laughs> I feel like a pig. No, Just I always like, feel like a pig, Hulk. I feel like a pig. I feel like a pig. I feel I'm like a pig. pig. I'm the pig. I've, when you want to feel like a pig, go to Manny's. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this clip. Everything. So it took us. 13 hours to do the two scenes. We did one early in the day, and then we- I just want to say it took him 13 hours because Mike kept interrupting me to tell stories. Yeah. Oh yeah, we went over here and there. Yeah. The actual shooting time is 38 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and also we Mike's too big of a star to show up on this set more than once, so they had to squeeze the two scenes into one day. They didn't have to do it in 13 hours. It was just a prima donna. Yeah where uh, Adam and I went and watched the baseball playoff game in his, in his trailer for three hours. And then we came back and we did the scene, if you've seen the movie, the scene in the kitchen where I'm yelling at the waiter and he comes back in to change his wager. Uh, that scene we did, and it was like a thousand degrees in the kitchen. So luckily that one they did very quickly. Mm. The first one, they must have shot 25 different takes. The second mm. one they shot about four or five wow. takes. And yeah. you don't wow. know if you're gonna be in the movie or not. I did that a year before the movie came out. So oh my gosh. I was there one day. Oh my gosh. I never saw any other actors except Adam. There was no that oh my gosh tells me she is not at all listening to what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. How does that what he's saying, like it it was a year since I'd shot it? Why is that an oh my gosh? There's nothing oh my gosh this, about it. It's this is when you're like at a wedding and you get cornered by like the old relative of one <laughs> of the people that you've never met before and they just start right. talking at you for 20 minutes. And they wrote, like, oh, wow, oh, my, World War II, oh my gosh, wow. Okay. In fact, it's a lot like that since he is an old relative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except the relative was in a Safdie Brothers movie. <laughs> yeah. She just wants to get back to the open bar. She doesn't care. She wants to call no one else the other day I was <laughs> there. I was only there for one day. Um, they treated you great. They gave me my own trailer. They couldn't have been nicer. The, you know, they let me wear my own suits. Uh, so they, they said, well, they, I brought some clothes. They picked out what they wanted, but they were my clothes. Uh, I think that's his passive so aggressive it, that, thing, that they didn't supply him with a free suit. Yeah. One hundred percent. Like a tailor made because he's so irregular shaped. <laughs> I mean, you think, you know, you, you're on a big set of a big movie like this, you know, they supply you with a nice Brooks Brothers or something, but you know, okay, all right. Hey, look, you know, they could have even had someone from the Wens Warehouse just have a tailor there for me, you know, build me a suit. But it's okay, I got to use my own stuff. It's better that way, you know, I know it fits, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I was at least comfortable. I was in my own clothes. So uh, they told me he what they wanted. They didn't give me a script. Mm -hmm. And I just did the scene. And that was it. And you don't know if you're going to be in it or not, or you wind up on a cutting floor. Who knows, you know? Yeah, you know and then that. they told me I was in the movie. That's and then I didn't really oh, hear a lot from her. Oh, rewind that. Did you see her reaction to that answer? Like, she's like, look, first of all, look at her. She's practically serious. asleep right now. <laughs> she's pulling a Mike Francesa. Mike, Mike is Sweetie Murdy, and she's Mike Francesa right now. You don't know if you're going to be in it or not, or you wind up on a cut room floor, who knows, you know? Yeah, you know. And then they told me I was yeah. in the movie. <laughs> oh, and then, oh, oh, my God, her looks. Her looks. I have such douche chills for my friend right now. Oh, my God. This this may be, this, we're like doing forensic science right now, you know? Like, we are deeply analyzing this. It's like the yeah, this Sabrina is about to turn into a crime scene. And look she at murders him. I, I can't get over her body language, how... She closed off and turned away from him she is and yeah. he is like almost like leaning in further to try to like spit on her with <laughs> just this, just was this not this wasn't during this wasn't during coronavirus oh no December no, this is, yeah <laughs> i didn't really hear a lot from them they sent me a couple of different sports things with their big nba junkies the safety brothers so um then the trailer yes, came out and it got everything. so much attention because I'm in the yes. trailer. You know, I have a bit part in this in, movie. In fairness, I don't think gonna be he in a trailer. Is but like that's just him. He he mansplains to men too. But also she just met him literally she just heard of who he is eight seconds before this interview started. So she has no idea who the fuck he is. You know, so I feel like he's in over explaining mode just because he's aware that he's a nobody I to think her. She knows who he is. Yeah, I feel she like she's probably really prepared for this interview. Oh, that wasn't was annoyed. 
I, I was I was like impressed with her that she didn't know who he was. Yeah, that, wasn't, like that. that wasn't a put down. I think that would raise no. my esteem of her. <laughs> if she does like sports broadcasting, she must know who he is. And she, probably that's why she's like, first of all, annoyed with this interview because she, she she either knew what she was, what he was going to be like, or she prepared and he's just talking over her entire interview. <laughs> yeah. She hasn't asked another question, has she? He's still on the first. She, she hasn't even been able to say anything. <laughs> she she still went, uh-huh. <laughs> oh wow that's what she said so far other than should, like after the first question they should cut to him this one shot that we're looking at now when they cut back to her there's just a tape recorder going uh-huh yeah mm-hmm, sure. i want to see how she ends this interview that yeah let's uh, i can't yeah we have, are we, we have still, about a minute here are we still officially on the question where she limited him to yes. one word yes, yeah. one yes. Word or less. yes. <laughs> i can't believe this but they put me in the trailer. Yeah, that's huge. And they put me in the trailer. trailer cursing. Oh, look at her face! She's so mad. <laughs> she, oh my gosh, she's like killing him with her she's eyes. She's stealing the show from Mike Francesa right now. This is like look at the, his brows right here. <laughs> it's like a this plant is shelf. I'm so, this is such a great idea, this episode. <laughs> you don't think you're going to be in a trailer, but they put me in the trailer. Yeah, that's huge. And they put me in a trailer. trailer cursing, okay? Yeah. So it's got a lot of attention. So the oh! trailer got like 7 million hits. I, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, good, good for you. Good for you. I can't take my eyes off her now. Like, he's not yeah. even in the room. I'm so <laughs> fixated on how annoyed she is. Yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. So the trailer, I'm getting stuff from people all over the country uh-huh. about the trailer. And then when I went to Lincoln Center to do the movie, they were, they, they were so generous. They, you know, put me on the stage. Now it's a New York crowd, so the crowd reacted to me. And I think a couple of the actors who were from California like, who is he? Yeah, why, who where, is why, is the, why are they going crazy here? You know, they didn't even know. They didn't. like, yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. so, uh, but it's a New York audience, so uh, that's when I audience. saw the movie with them. So uh, the movie's really good. It's a very different role for Sandler. He's great in it. <laughs> to wrap it up. His girlfriend is sensational in it. And Kevin you Garnett, who well, I never liked as a player, <laughs> as far as a person. He's a, he, he was never a friendly guy. He is terrific Wait, in the movie. Now, I never saw... Who's, what a backhanded... Adam, does he mean Adam Sandler's girlfriend in the movie, or like his Yeah, girlfriend? I think in the movie, because he's married. Maybe he thought bother... that was his actual he girlfriend. Didn't, he didn't even bother learning her name? No. I thought this was a documentary. Okay. Well, he doesn't even know Adam Sandler's name in the movie. He refers to him as Adam Sandler. Yeah. <laughs> he does that all the time. Like when he talks about Braveheart, it's like Mel Gibson, you know. Mel Gibson's on the horse. Uh... <laughs> I saw Kevin anyway. He wasn't there when I was there. And I never really cared for him, to be honest with right, you. But right. he's really good in the he, movie. I have heard good things yeah. about him. What a well, shitty thing to say. Like, what the By fuck the way, that was that? not one. Website. How do you talk? Oh, she called about? him out. She's about to he's call him out on it. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't know. Okay. There's only two seconds left. He's, 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 talk, for her. he's talking about Kevin Garnett. Like, can't you just say he did a good oh. job? Like, I say what an yeah. asshole he is, and I ch- totally changed my opinion. I've heard good things about him. Well, we're going to dive into more on that. By the way, that was not one word or less, Mike. Okay? I'm going to call you out on that. Yeah! <laughs> I wish I could see what happened next. Oh, I just wish so, there was ten more he seconds. Stormed off set. How dare you? Just, so, just so everyone knows, and I looked up. Her name is Julie Stewart, and our next episode is going to be a compilation of Julie Stewart clips. Uh, being annoyed <laughs> with the, I want to see who else she interviewed that like she got okay. annoyed with. But we got to focus on Mike right now. All right, let's do a quick palate cleanser. <laughs> this, this one is, this one is, is an Eric submission. Speaks for itself. Um, nothing exciting to talk about in that game. Titans over the Buccaneers. They stay in the wild card hunt. Uh, in the wild card hunt. Uh, Chris Johnson had. You gotta. We gotta play this again Washington because I want to highlight something. We gotta highlight something, and then we're gonna go back to the clip. <laughs> what I want to highlight is that he says wild card hunt. Which happens, okay, but his recovery, he, he, oh my, you see, first he freaks out, <laughs> then he can't stick the landing on the, he says, he says wild card hunt, but he thinks he said it wrong. So he freaks out that he said wild card hunt again, and he stumbles. That's my okay. favorite part of this. Um, After Nothing this. exciting to talk about in that game. Titans over the Buccaneers, they stay in the wild card hunt. Uh, in the, uh, wild card hunt. Uh, 
<laughs> no, he fucks up in the hard hunt. <laughs> Christ, but he says wild. But play it again. He says wild card hunt correctly. Look, we can even we can even slow it down a little. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> he even says eight. it. He says it correctly eventually, and then he freaks out that he thinks he said it wrong again, which would be a million times worse. A wild hunt cunt, uh, in the hard, uh, wild card hunt. <laughs> in the hard. Uh, but let him say that. Let him. Okay. What's yeah, the yeah, aftermath? Yeah. Uh, in the horror, uh, wild card hunt, uh, Chris Johnson had... Uh -oh. Malfunction? Yeah, uh, no, I said it. I got uh, it. He played it back in his mind and said, oh, no, it was, yeah. that was correct, okay? All right. <laughs> Let's go a little slower. <laughs> Buccaneers, they stay in the wild hard cut. Uh, in the horror, uh, wild card hunt, uh, uh, Chris Johnson uh, and... Uh, <laughs> uh, is this on the know. new Melvin's album? Okay. All right, all right. Let's keep it moving. By the way, Eric, thank you for this. Yes. Um, all right. Here is a prank call about Sandusky. Who is Jerry Sandusky? Just to uh, remind our viewers. He was the assistant coach at Penn State under Joe Paterno, and he was molesting children. So there was a, or was it, it was underage children like that, some program. He was the one molesting them, or was he covering it up? Oh, no, no, no the, was the, the school was covering it up. He was the one molesting them, and Joe Robin. Paterno helped uh, cover it. Oh, Joe Paterno, that's right. Okay, yeah. Okay. Roselle, what's up, Robert? Mike, I'm going to give it to you from a uh, different perspective. I grew up being abused by my father, okay? Mm -hmm. And my mom knew what was going on, mm -hmm. uh, okay. an authority figure. Look um, at those eyebrows. My grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, teachers, neighbors, the police, all knew what was going on. He's picturing it in his head. Oh, wait, how is that okay. possible? Well, because my mom was abused. Now this is. Well, wait a second. What do you mean? The, you said your teachers and the police knew what was going on. The yes, police let the this, police this condoned 19, it. This was from 1963 that. to 1978. And the police condoned it. The police would not do anything because you were wait. not allowed to press charges unless you were 18. The all police right. jumped I mean, in. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. This is what happened. Okay. I'm, and uh, so I'm telling you, our neighbors <laughs> knew. My mom's family knew. My father's family knew. Teachers knew, and um, this is back to the 70s. If you go to the Godfather movie, you know, don't get involved. So everyone knew what was happening in our house, but nobody stepped in until I killed him. On? Yeah, I don't get that either. I killed him in self-defense when I was 14 years old. Well, this is a time, I and this is, how do I know? I see, I, the problem is I can't take this as being a real story. I don't know if this is a real story or not. So, I mean, that's why I need, I can't I verify it, okay? And, um, don't I, 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 you dare going on, the Godfather. You know, I, don't you dare impugn the Godfather on my radio program. Francis okay. Ford Coppola is an auteur who deserves respect, okay? If that was me, the next... Take... Go ahead. Sorry. I can't take anything seriously that a guy at a Jackal concert says. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I show me the I, documentation. I, Please send it to me, okay? That's what I would say. Show I me know. the whole thing in documentation. I, then I'll take it seriously because I don't know if you're making it up or not. I, I can't. I have a question. Do, can we check if Mike's late brother had a 14 year old son? <laughs> maybe it wasn't suicide oh. after all. Maybe this is actually tying two things together. Or maybe he did a Chris Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> killed them both and then killed himself. Oh my God. It's just if, if da baby Daniel was the one that did the shooting rather than Chris. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. I don't think we did. Uh, I, I want to play. We might have played this one on the show, but it's worth. Oh, no, I guess we, uh, I don't remember this video. We did what it, is, and this is great. So he talks about learning uh, Randy Savage is in the Hall of Fame. And, yeah. you know, as I mentioned at the top, our first foray into Mike Francesa clips was about him talking about wrestling, which is just incredible. So let's... Can I also, before you play this... Yes, oh, absolutely. Uh, the date on this is March 26, 2015. This is... On the the upload, title is yeah. Mike Francesa Learns About Randy Savage. Uh, at, did, you, did you know that Mike that Randy Savage died at the beginning of the decade? I believe 2011 or thereabouts? Well, they're saying... 
Yeah, but I, there's I just, Randy Savage I wanna, Hall of Fame. I just want to. I just want to point that out, and then we can continue. Go okay. Ahead. How excited you are about the Macho Man is getting inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame on Sunday? Well, I mean, we did. We already did wrestling today. Um, uh, I, I... First of all. My favorite thing is look at how disgusted he is that he has to talk about wrestling. Again. Like, we already gave this fucking nonsense the time of day on my show. This is a very tight show. We only have so much time to talk. So, the that horse racing. Why would he even do it the once? Was this the <laughs> same guess... day as the Callisto comment? Is no, it possible no, it's the think same so. episode. It was Monza's bonuses. Uh, it was Monza's bonus. For his he gets birthday. To talk about wrestling. Yeah. I've actually, I've actually done a couple of charity things with Randy Savage through the years, so I do know him. So uh, I actually play. I do know him. <laughs> what a I don't know, know him, but I know him. Uh, I do want to point out though that Randy Savage uh, was very much known for doing lots and lots of charity, and that's kind of how he's friends with all these other. Uh, sports personality is not just uh, the great Mike Francesa, but I like there's photos. Oh, sorry. There's just photos. There's photos of him with tons of big uh, uh, sports stars. But go ahead. I was uh, going to say, I sat with him at the, at the fourth row at a Devils game in Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> great seats, uh, wonderful uh, comp, table service. Fantastic. But, uh, his tassels, they kept getting stuck in the in the cheese, little cheese <laughs> they give you for the nachos. It was, it was we a had a picture, annoying. he said it was for Elizabeth, but I knew it was really for him. We had a 20-minute conversation where he only said, oh, yeah, and I only said, okay. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do that. We got to put that together. We had oh, a great yeah. rapport. Okay. Great rapport. I knew what he was thinking. He knew what I was thinking. It was like this. <laughs> Playing a couple of those uh, tournaments with him. Is he actually getting into the Hall of Fame this week, the Macho Man? Is that true? Yeah, he's yeah Saturday. Yeah. All right, well, good. I, you know, he's at- <laughs> is that why, true? Like, why, why would is, someone call and make a prank? Why he's is Mike so Fran- paranoid. Why is Mike Francesa wearing a stethoscope? That's how he uses his, That's head- his headphones. headphones. He puts them in front of him like that. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, he has ridiculous. the head. Yeah. I, like, I think- monitoring his own heart rate. <laughs> he doesn't want to mess up his beautiful hair uh, blowout that he has. It's also, it, it looks. Doesn't it kind of look like the headphones are almost like tucked into? Oh, it's it's weird because it's over the zipper, but then tucked into his shirt. Is there like a flap it's hidden under? <laughs> like where is the cord? I don't know. All right, we haven't let's gotten to the key. Scope. We haven't gotten to the key point of this clip though. Oh, I'm sorry. No. It is definitely stethoscope, like the design of a stethoscope, but you can tell it's just pr- probably custom headphones for him. Can you imagine how much he must have been annoyed by the, the cans, the old can? Is, and it's also probably like, look, I don't want to ruin my hair. My hair is my signature yeah. here, you know? Look, and he does have great hair. You, you do have to, you got to give it to him. And like his hairline is still pretty low. So he, he can't have his hairline ruined. So he has to have the stethoscope. Makes sense. Actually, the one wrestler Manhattan with a dent in his head after work. <laughs> Imagine. Actually, are you, oh, he's, he's dead now. I didn't know he's dead. I didn't know. That. So, in the car accident. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> That's what I was trying to tell you. That's why I mentioned the clip date because he went four years without knowing his good friend was dead. And they want to point out, <laughs> oh. like, for those of you who don't necessarily follow wrestling or weren't paying attention at the time, this was national news would match like it wasn't just like in wrestling circles right. like the he actual news wrestling. yeah like actual like espn covered it on sports center like it was news news and his close friend <laughs> let's go back a few seconds this is amazing tournaments with him is he actually getting into the hall of fame this week the macho man is that true yeah he's yeah sorry all right well good i you know, he's actually the one wrestler I actually moved. Are you, oh, he's, he's dead now? I didn't know he's dead. I didn't know that. So, in a car accident. Oh, he did, really? I mean, it, it, when we did these games years ago, these charity softball games, he used to he used to play in them with us. With Imus and those guys, he used to play in the games with us. So I did know him. Uh, I didn't see him in a long time, obviously. But when did he die? Like two or three years ago. A car accident? 
a car accident. There's reports he had a heart attack. Oh, geez. He was a nice guy. I mean, he, he used to come play. And, you know, we did those things up at Yale. Mm -hmm. We had the, you know, those, those charity games up there a couple of years. He played in those with us. He was around, so I did know him. But, I mean, obviously, I haven't seen him in a very long time, nor did I know that he had passed away. <laughs> so, he, it, it, there was a risk. Say, oh, is it? He <laughs> looks so happy about this. Like, that motherfucker. Fuck harassed me during those softball games, but who's laughing now? Yeah, he, he called me a fat fuck, but I'm still alive, and he's dead. I was gonna say, like, he he <laughs> he's so full of shit because he he just learned that the guy died. He has to stick in that little note that says, "Obviously, I didn't hang out with him." He totally was gonna say that they just had hung uh -huh. out until he learned that tidbit that he was dead. <laughs> oh, interesting. It, it, yeah, like it, he's trying to say, like, like it also it's clear he didn't know him. He only knew him at these fucking games that he was at, and Macho yeah, Man was being cordial to him. Yeah, and it's like, but that's how he knows anyone. That to him, that's like a relationship. Aw, that's sad. <laughs> wrestling Hall of Fame is that it? There is a wrestling Hall of Fame. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very big. <laughs> Very big? To show Very big. Where network. is the Wrestling Hall of Fame? Ah! I don't think there's a place. Oh, so it doesn't have a building? Not that I know of. Okay. And so the Macho Hall of Man fame. gets in. No. I've never seen the Macho. Did he have the... Is Elizabeth with him? Correct. She died too, actually. I've never seen the Macho. <laughs> <laughs> she died too? <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's They're get all dead, now. Mikey. Oh, my idols. Gets in. No, I've never seen the macho. Did he have the is Elizabeth with him? Correct. She <laughs> Wait, did he have the Elizabeth? <laughs> he almost said, did he did have, he have that wild hard cunt? Was that him? <laughs> did he have the is Elizabeth with him? Correct. She died too, actually. Elizabeth gone. Elizabeth She's was that little girl. Was like his manager, right? Yes. Elizabeth. The little, little girl. girl. See, yeah. Little girl. Look at how, how proud of himself he is. Yeah. See, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> She used to come out dressed like uh, Shirley Temple, right? A little girl. She's like, <laughs> There's like no emo, like he's not emoting at no, all. He's Two smiling. People. He's like cheerful about it. I think Sid nailed it. He really hated Macho Man Randy Savage. I think yeah. uh, it's just one of those things. Like uh, uh, I, I had secretly injected hydrazepalamine into his heart before he got into that car because I really hated the way he talked to me at that charity softball tournament. That yep. piece of garbage. You don't fuck with Mikey. Women matches now. <laughs> Can you go back a little? Oh bit? Oh, we gotta do it again. We gotta, oh, get we gotta go back. Mons, go back Mons throws seconds. at him the fact that WWE does women's matches now, and that was his reaction. In case yes, let's let's please watch <laughs> his that again. Reaction is all. Oh, he is dumbfounded. <laughs> That's what that reaction is. Man, gets him. No, I've never seen the macho. Did he have the? Is Elizabeth with him? Correct. She died too, actually. Elizabeth gone. Elizabeth was that little girl who was like his manager, right? <laughs> Elizabeth. Yes. So yeah, had women matches now. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, they're welcome that's, to come you over. Know what that <laughs> reaction is? That reaction, one hundred percent, is the reaction I get from my mother-in-law when I tell her that not all Mexicans are on welfare. It's 100% that, like, eh, eh, sure, whatever you said. I don't hand, know where you get your information from, but what, okay. Mons actually succeeded in getting him to make an answer that was one word or less. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so oh, if, only that, if only that woman interviewing him, like, did a leg drop on him or something, he would have totally ground. turned off and just clammed up. Yeah, he'd have three... Three broken vertebrae sitting there going, oh, well, I ain't gonna lie. All she had to do was tell him that women achieve things too. Yes. And yeah. then he would have just. <laughs> no, uh, I guess. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, whatever. He, he clocked in at about 0. 0.75 words in that answer. <laughs> oh, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> Can we see it one more time, please? <laughs> just one more. Look at his face. Oh, wait. <laughs> We need the question too, you know, the, the statement. Oh, we need Mons's part in this. Oh, oh. Oh. So you yeah, had women matches now. Oh, yeah, you know, I guess so. Okay, okay. They're welcome to come over for Mons, are you pulling my leg? 
I know I said one more time, but can we do it one more time in slow motion, just in case yes. there are actual words that he said? Maybe we can figure it out. Because it sounds like he's like, ah, oh, red wrestling. But, like, I want to know if there was... <laughs> I guess some more or something. That's... I heard that. That's... I think it's, I think it's that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know. Yeah. You got that's, a yeah. That's, I don't, you know. There's a yeah. There's a yeah in there. I guess. It's actually like five words. You're right. Slowing it down made it. He couldn't even, he couldn't even do it here. One word or less. Oh, yeah, I guess so. They want him to come over for me. <laughs> oh, he wants a Netflix and chill and WWE with Mike. I'm not the last. I told you the last time I watched wrestling, I was six or seven. Argentino Apollo was on the ropes with his bare feet. Bobo <laughs> Brazil had the cocoa bar. Okay, nice that's the last time I saw wrestling. And look how excited he is to talk about uh, Angelo Rocca over here. Like it's like it's, that's, that's when it was good when I can't. Italian pride. <laughs> When they did 45 minute headlocks until somebody gave up, that was when it was good. Bobo so, Brazil so with I a would... cocoa butt. He just liked every racial stereotype that they had back then. Gorgeous George who came out with the flamboyance, you know what I mean? That's how you did a gay character back then, okay? <laughs> with not class. Like this, not like this uh, sunny kiss or whatever. That's ridiculous. Get out of here with that. Get that ass out of here. Put on some pants. <laughs> okay, that's the last time I saw wrestling. So I would say, sore. I'll tell you who had the chance. I love that there's an R in saw. Last sore. time I saw. Sore. <laughs> I would, I would totally support a Patreon uh, uh, project of Mike Francesa watching current wrestling and reviewing. Oh my God. I agree. Yeah, like watching a women's match, watching like a comedy match. Yeah, like yep. he would hate. Yeah, him and Jim Cornette together. I would pay for that app. I'll tell you who had the champion. You probably never even heard of him. The guy who was the champion at that time, it was not Bruno San Martino. It was the blonde haired guy, Buddy Rogers. You ever hear of Buddy Rogers? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Right, so you know <laughs> oh, oh, he's so <laughs> mad. He's so mad at mine <laughs> because he knew. You're supposed to not know anything until I tell it to you. He's giving Mon the same look that that reporter gave him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But still, his body language is more welcoming than that reporter's. <laughs> yes. yeah. So Bruno San Martino was like the good guy. Buddy Rogers was like the bad guy. Okay, right. But he had the championship. Buddy Rogers had the championship. So, uh, And I know that Mongo Nation likes when I talk about wrestling. I know they get all excited. Mongo I know they get all excited. So, but uh, that's the... Hold on. What's Mongo Nation? That's is, his, is that Monza's show? Comedians. That's what he calls. That's what he calls his fans, Mongo Nation. Wait, well, actually, Francesca's that's what they call. Or they, no, Francesca's friend, but they call themselves that. It's like a they have online. What, why Mongo? Mongos are what the callers are. Like they like it's. I don't know how that started, but Mongos are are his dumb callers. Okay, that he hangs up on all the time. I thought it I was know. like Monza's fans. <laughs> Mons has an only. Monzo that's not a thing. Monzo Mons doesn't have fans. That's who subscribes to his only fans. I'm gonna change my name to Monzo Nation. <laughs> wrestling I know is uh, I like the Argentino Apollo who didn't you know why because he didn't wear any shoes he was barefoot and he used to jump on top of the ring on the ropes that was his thing you know that was oh, it oh he's a he's a high spots kind of guy he'll probably yes. love the cruiserweights all right flip jump feet. on guys and jump on their backs and everything so that was that was a big deal <laughs> but I'm sad to hear that about the Macho Man is a very nice guy we had those games we played those charity games for uh, the Special Olympics up in uh, Yale Stadium a couple of years in a row uh, the Imus All Stars against NBC. The Imus All Stars against CBS. Oh, yeah, and NBC. he played in those games. Yeah, one year he was the umpire, and one year he played in the game with us. He was a very nice guy. Very nice guy. He played minor league baseball. Oh, he did. I think in the Cardinals organization. Really? I didn't know that. Wait, good, did it was a very, very nice guy. Say that he, uh, he, oh wow! I, I have never seen Mons. He looks like a uh, fat bastard uh, when he got the liposuction, like at the end of the movie. Oh. I don't want to be a buzzkill, but I'm not sure that's Mons. I think he sounds a little different than Mons. I might be like a different guy filling in for Mons or something. I could oh, be wrong. I, could, I mean, he goes I, through those guys pretty at a pretty high clip. 
I mean, maybe it's the audio, but that doesn't sound like Mons to me. Mons is there, though. We heard him. Oh, uh, maybe it is then. I don't want to. No, yeah, no, Mons is like the wrestling fan. Okay, so maybe it's him. Let's keep going. Maybe the answer is there. He's left. I didn't realize he had passed away. So, good. well, congratulations to his family for getting into the hole. For a second, Wait, he's like, good, good for him? <laughs> good, for him. good for his dead corpse, okay? What do you want from me? Did he ever go to Manny's? Did he ever eat with Bill Parcells? No? Okay. He had a terrible yes. strike zone. I'll tell you that right now. When he was up in those games, a fucking huge strike zone. Couldn't get I anything. Mean, is it high? If it's high in the first inning, it should be high in the seventh <laughs> inning, okay? Don't change it in the middle of the game. Midstream. <laughs> Just saying. I struck out oh, looking at so nonsense. That's why he had him killed. He injected that medicine into his body. <laughs> they would have a car accident because of a bad strike three call. Yeah. This guy called up trying to just, you know, bother me with the wrestling, and it turned out that, you know, that we uh, spent a minute on uh, the Macho Man getting into the uh, Wrestling Hall of Fame. That's it. So now you got a big weekend plan. You have a ceremony to watch with the Macho Man. Who was your favorite wrestler growing up? A guy named Chris Jericho. Never heard of him. Who His was father played for the Rangers. Oh, really? Ted Irvine. Oh, oh yeah. Really? really? And oh, wow. did you have a favorite wrestler growing up? Yeah, when I was young, I loved Hulk Hogan. I think I really watch wrestling after. Oh. Oh, yeah, there's another oh, guy talking oh. off camera. So you don't watch your age. camera is Mons. I think the guy yeah. on camera is Mons. This guy is like his Baba Booey. <laughs> no, I don't need to. I hear enough of it from him and Evan. I mean, they're crazed. I mean, they're I was really going to correct you before when you said good guy, bad guy. That's not the terminology. It's face and heel. It's very important you understand these terms. What is that? I, that I don't know anything about. A good guy is a face and a bad guy is a heel. Oh, really? And that, they that, switch all the time, and it's called a turn. Okay. I, that, that I'm not familiar with. That, that I don't know anything about. So a face and a heel? Yeah. It. Got it. Can you pause it? Okay, it I like, found... It Sorry, looks like ahead. a grandma when you tell her about, like, a DVD or something like that, and she, like, <laughs> does not believe you. A face and a heel. This... This is Mons. So yeah, so that's, that was the, the, uh, the fat bastard okay. guy, yeah. Sorry, so, my mistake. It was, no, no, that guy has brown hair. The fat bastard guy had No, the, no, he has like, up, like if you look at his, fetish. if you yeah, look at his fetish. beard, you see the gingerness. Yeah. And he's also got those weird mutton chops in the video. So. Yeah. yeah, and the mutton chops match. <laughs> Face and heel. Uh, that that I'd never heard before. That, that did not Neither did I, but now I hear it every day. Shocked you when I knew that Elizabeth was there, though. Huh? Shocked you with that. Because huh? I think uh, she shocked me. Game, it right? shocked me. It shocked yeah. me when he yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 they were? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. It's good to know. Bill and Rockaway, what's up, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Oh, my God. What were you going to say, Darren? I said it shocked me when he thought she was a little girl at eight years yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth. Oh, uh, cool. we're back. So now yeah. it looks like uh, some of these are audio clips and not video clips. Ooh. They're like drops. Ooh. Sorry about that. Let me adjust the audio. All right, here we go. What? I couldn't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Oh, you don't? I think it's just going through your cans right now. But we could watch you react to it. That might be fun. Yeah. Rob, re what it says. Rob, react to that clip in one word or less. <laughs> well, uh, 40 <laughs> minutes later. <cut> <laughs> All right, here we go. Karen in Brooklyn. What's up, Karen? Mike, you got to be kidding me. What? The Get holiday, the Mets get holiday. They got no farm system. He wants to pitch with Burnett and Cece. Who are you kidding? Wait a second. Are, are, you a, are you a Yankee fan? Yes, I sure well, am. Doc, holiday does. Okay, before we keep going, what are they talking about? They're talking about a Hall of Fame pitcher, uh, Roy Holiday, who they, they <laughs> was, I think, uh, at, at some trading deadline, both the Yankees and the Mets were like, or the Yankees were interested in getting him. And Mike Francesa is saying the Mets should get him. And this caller is calling in to say that's a ridiculous idea. I should go to the Yankees. The Yankees are much better, blah, blah, blah. I got it. Is thank Francesa you, thank you for the translation into layman's terms. You got it. <laughs> Sorry. Francesca's uh, a Yankees fan? Like, is he a known Yankees fan? He is, is, but I will say this, and I'm going to say something positive about Mike Francesca. Buckle up. Yeah. Uh, all the dipshits on WFAN, and this is a low bar, he is, like, the most fair to the Mets, I would say. 
he does shit on them when there are bad things, but he's very fair to them. He's like a contrarian to the station. They always it's like a it's like a mess, Mets roast channel basically, and he's like the only one that provides like some kind of pushback to that. So I think he's about to say something fairly halfway decent about the Mets and shit on a dumb Yankee fan calling. Let's let's hear. Halliday does not want a Mets fan, Francesca. Make them believe you're a Yankee. Wait a fan. second. Wait a second. I'll do. Uh, yeah, you're, now you're calling me a Mets fan, okay? So here yeah, you're a, you're a Yankee fan. You're a Yankee fan, right? Yeah. Okay. So you ask me a Yankee question, and I'll ask you one. Let's see who goes out first, okay? <laughs> you don't know anything, is what you don't know. Get, oh get. my god! Oh my god! He's pulling the oh you like metal? Name five metal albums. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, like, anything. It's like yeah, he's gay. It's like it's like when there's a girl out at a metal show. No, you can you can relate to this with like an underground shirt, and then people are like, you don't really like that. Yeah. Does your, did your boyfriend your give you boyfriend that shirt? Listens to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, speaking they... of Noah and metal shows, the way you're sitting right now and Francesca looming over your shoulder is that how <laughs> Ken Pierce approached you that time? <laughs> yes. Is that the then... face he made? <laughs> no, you're gonna make yes. her now. She... She's going to see him over her shoulder on camera and run the other way and sneak them. She's going to be out of the shop for a few minutes. Oh, oh and name, the, name all the members of Dragon Force, please. Herman Lee. I know you know them. I'm kidding. Okay. Come on, please. Oh, also, you can say triggered. any I'm names. Triggered. I would believe you. I'm triggered. You don't know anything is what you don't know if you're calling me a Met fan. Oh. I'm sorry you're a woman, but you don't deserve better than that, calling me a Met fan. I think Wait, you know, I don't think what? that's as bad as it sounds. I think he's saying, "I'm sorry, I'm insulting you. I yeah. didn't insult a woman." Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, comma, you're a woman. I'm yeah. sorry, you're a woman. I shouldn't be insulting you, but you're being so stupid yeah. that I have to. Oh, I thought he it. was like apologizing for her that she's be that she is she was born it, a woman. It, it, it did sound like that. It's his wonderful Mike Cadence. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. This next one is Mike's thoughts on something near and dear to my heart. Marijuana. I mean, I don't, I don't smoke, I don't smoke marijuana, but I'm not gonna castigate him. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in any way promoting smoking marijuana, and I don't smoke it. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Is that the end of the clip? That's it. So that's like he's sort of pro. I mean, use the word castigate correctly, which is shocking to me. And also, I guess he's like kind of laissez-faire about marijuana. He doesn't think it should be illegal, even though he doesn't smoke it. That's yeah, cool. I guess that makes sense. We're let's, saying let's too see. many positive things about Mike Francesa here. Oh, terrible. Uh, here are some quicker ones. He then had sex with me and then left without saying anything. I said, no, we can't do this. This is not right. And then he had sex with me and then he left without saying anything. You got very personal on this episode. <laughs> This was the day after uh, Chris Russo left the show and Mike was explaining why they parted ways. Oh. Okay. I see. Fantastic. All right, here's, the, here's another one. About His guy. deal. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to control the audio volume here. His deal is he has just got to stop. He has got to stop getting young women pregnant. That's the bottom line. I mean, you can't say it in his way. He's got to stop Sean? doing it. Sean, really? <laughs> Does Sean get women pregnant? Got babies all over the country. <laughs> he saved all the cum in the Doritos bags and oh. put them in when he got home off, off the road. And he's been bringing them to the sperm banks uh, every day. We all thought... Oh, this is a short one. It's with Mickey Mantle. Wait, what? what? Wait. We all thought about it, having sex with Mickey Mantle. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Excuse me? We all thought about it having sex with Mickey Mantle. I think it's better with no context. Well, it's, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'll just slip it in. <laughs> to, to Mickey Mantle. When yep. not looking. I'll just slip it in. Uh, then there... Uh, That's what he tells Ro before uh -huh. they go to bed. And she falls asleep. Mike, have sex with me in one pump or less. I don't that think, he can accomplish. Yeah, he's not going to go on for seven hours with that answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. 
That's his left pump. That's I know that's post pump. That's his like come down organ. Oh. <laughs> and that little like gasp of air. Uh but that's something uh said uh we interview with um uh uh, things about him being a team leader, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right. Him and reading then... his contract agreement. That was a clip of that. And then one final clip. Of him going all straight. No, 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 no. Oh, that is almost exactly the Shlomo clip. It's the same thing. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Stop making chicken franchise jokes, first of all. No, 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 have the same oh. genes. Imagine if Shlomo was Mons. Oh, he was man. Mike's Mons. <laughs> well, oh my Mons gosh. Is very articulate. I have to say, I don't think he could be Shlomo. <laughs> well, imagine that Shlomo had an internship at WFAN yeah. working on Mike Francesa's show and what that would be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Shlomo, did you no, 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 I already know what portion of this show is going to be in the preview clip. No, 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 All right. Well, I think that's a pretty great note. No, 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 to end on. And I want to say. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say that it's just one clip that was actually released yesterday. Oh, yeah. Being wrong for the last time on his show, on his last show. Ooh, you want to hear it? it? Yeah. Right. It's at the it's on the Funhouse Twitter account. It's the top post. Let's see. Give me a <laughs> second to pull it up. This is Mike Francesa being wrong for the last time on WFAN. Time being for the last yeah. time being. Jamal Adams. It's the top one. Uh, okay. I see. Thirty seconds. Right. Here we go. He's trying to do everything he could to get out of here, whether it is to get to his beloved the Cowboys or to get to any other team. Problem is, if you're a team like the Cowboys or whatever team that's trying to do something this season, if you bring a guy in, pay him top dollar at the position, and then trade a one and a two or, heaven forbid, two ones for this guy, I could trade two ones for him anyway. You're not going to do it. You're never going to get that. But let's – What did he say? say one oh, two, I one guess it three. wasn't that good. You I'm sorry. Then, I brought – it's anticlimactic. I apologize, guys. I thought there was like a juxtaposition of his two clips where he was. Oh, let's... It's not. Uh, it's uh, not. Uh, uh, He's not uh, retired. Uh, again, what? Have... Yesterday he was already done by then. So there right. is no. Right, he doesn't right. have the pulpit anymore to admit he was wrong. Well, he, did not, he said it in the first place. Yeah. Let's play his retirement clip, and that will retire on his retirement clip. Okay. Uh, I, again, I have no plans right now. Uh, I have. Did he say mow I plans, mean, mow plans, or no plans? He mow plans money. to mow the lawn because he has no <laughs> job anymore. So that's it. He was inspired by that guy who killed his parents on the phone with the lawnmower in the back. <laughs> he killed them with the lawnmower. Uh, I have. I have nothing planned. Uh, <laughs> I'm not retiring. Like I said, I don't want to have a daily schedule anymore. I don't want to be locked into being anywhere every day, but I expect to do some stuff. Um, I 
we'll wait and see, you know, if there's a couple. I have already received a couple offers, so uh, I'll sort through them. Um, like I said, I'm not going to do anything that's daily anymore at this. So he's not even doing his app? Mike's on? I guess not. No. Rob, can I make you a suggestion? It's a million-dollar suggestion. I'm giving it to you for free. Someone is a great guest for Squared Circle Pit and has a lot of free time now. Months. Oh no, Mike, come on. You can talk about <laughs> barefoot wrestlers. You can talk about ah. Bobo Brazil. You can talk about little girls. Come on, you cover everything with him. Women's wrestling. Yeah. Talk about Shimmer with Mike Francesa. <laughs> just play him new women's wrestling, just modern women's wrestling. Oh, my God. And then, and right. then he'll, he'll just be sitting there going. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're telling me that Kyrie Sane has never been to Manny's and had the veal franchise? No, 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 no. I mean, she's a little girl. She's a little Japanese girl. She does a lot of flips. I like her. I like her. Well, we hope you enjoyed this wonderful, wonderful bonus edition i had a good time i laughed my ass off we hope you did as well and uh we hope you keep enjoying the patreon and, and thank you so much for all of your support thank you to livecast nation to our to our mongos the your support. any final words from the three of you um back after this bye